dear students today i will discuss about the second part of that insulation chapter that factors of affecting distribution of temperature hope you have seen the first part of the video dear students here what we will get to know today the factors and whatever the factors that i have written latitude altitude distance from the sea winds ocean currents clouds and rainfall the slope of the land vegetation and nature of the soil how these nine that factors it basically affect the distribution of the temperature on this earth that we will get to know today so be with me to know about this so students in the first part i have described that the types of radiation when the solar radiation reaches to the earth then whatever percentage received by the amount of the heat or the radiation received by the earth surface that is known as insulation we have read do you know students this radiation basically solar radiation is made up three parts first is the white light which we can get to see number two is that ultraviolet rays number three is there the earth infrared so this uh, except this white that uh, light this infrared and um, solar that other also ultraviolet rays somehow it's uh, prevented by the different layers of the atmosphere and some reaches to that earth surface here we will get to know how these that factors it's affecting and how the radiation basically helping to distribute the uh, temperature first latitude we all know that latitudes are the parallel lines on that earth imaginary parallel lines but how this latitudes that affect or that it influence the the distribution of temperature in this diagram you are getting to see i have ma uh, first drawn the main latitudes 0 degree that is equator 23 degree 30 minute north and south tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn then 66 degree 30 minute north and south this is arctic and antarctic zone then 90 degree north and 90 degree south means north pole south pole now we all know sun that rays always says basically vertically rays over this equator that's why throughout the year over this equator it will have more the temperature compared to the other areas wherever we are reaching going towards pole it may north pole and south pole from that equator the Uh, it means the radiation or the heat amount it will be less students so this way how the heat zones form you are getting to see that whenever we are moving towards pole that both the pole north pole and south pole from the equator that gradually the amount of the heat decrease but why is happening that you have to know see here i have also drawn that of vertical lines and some slanting lines why same things happening over the earth here the rays when it is vertically rising over this area it is covering less area and the amount of heat will be more and when the slanting rays it is reaching it is covering more area so that's why uh, basically the amount of heat will be less it is happening over that uh, over this earth also the sun always rays over this equator directly or vertically that's why it is getting maximum rays but as the places are going basically more cover uh, more area covering by that sun radiation that's why these areas from the equator part gradually they are getting less amount of rays okay and now the next point which is altitude altitude mean height one thing always remember higher altitude lower temperature lower altitude high temperature so just is opposite relation vice versa relationship higher altitude lower temperature why is happening as we all know first that uh, we have read in the atmosphere that composition chapter atmosphere composition and layers that in the lower layer of the atmosphere it's happening the it's having more density of the gases the basically uh, due to the presence of different uh, molecules and gases and different dust particles they are having more capacity to hold the moisture whenever we are going up then the this density of the air it decreasing so they are losing this capacity to absorb the heat so whenever we are going up at that our higher altitude the amount of heat will be less 
one more thing is there that we all know here that in just previous part we have read the solar the terrestrial radiation by that the lower layer of the atmosphere will get heat first gradually by the conduction conduction process the with the just uh, linked with the other layer of the upper layer of the atmosphere gradually will absorb heat and here it's happening the same that first that density is it changing with that height as well as with that the terrestrial radiation first it is receiving near to that that also surface areas wind then it is passing to the conduction process to the upper layer then upper layer so gradually the lower upper layer of the higher altitude the temperature amount will be less and which which rate that the temperature amount it will be 6.4 degrees centigrade per kilometer 6.4 degree centigrade per kilometer so we are, we are getting to see higher altitude lower temperature lower altitude higher temperature next here see now distance from the sea as we have read in earlier that part uh, here i am uh, telling more about that we all know whenever any of the place it's situated far from any of the water bodies it will have extreme kind of climatic conditions or the temperature variation it will be high like uh, in that part we can see continental type or that uh, extreme type of climate means at the uh, winter season whenever the temperature it is going down to that 3 to 5 degrees centigrade at that uh, part of the winter the temperature when it are when it is going down 5 degrees centigrade and in the summer temperature we are getting to see 47 degrees celsius so here the variation of the winter and summer we are getting to see here near about 42 degree this 42 degree centigrade the range of temperature is 47 uh, 2 degree centigrade means in the which part will be far from the water bodies will have more range of temperature like i am giving the example of the part like uh, part of also northern india even the kanpur uh, part of uttar pradesh we can you can see this kind of extreme kind of are also temp uh, it means temperature the climatic condition on the other hand which place will be near to that coastal area or where uh, near to that water bodies will have less, less range of temperature means winter temperature it will have that near about 30 i'm um, sorry that 27 degree centigrade and summer temperature it will have hardly 30 degree centigrade so the range um, here showing 3 degree centigrade hardly 3 to 5 degree variation we can see so coastal area always will have a maritime climate or a suitable moderate kind of climate and the continental part always will have more that also range of temperature that's why extreme kind of climate so why it's happening due to this sea bridge and land bridge that sea bridge means that you can see and you know that the differential heating of land and water land always absorb and reflect the heats faster than that water bodies so at the daytime when land is absorbing the heat, uh, heat faster that time over water bodies it is cold air there so when the warm water from the land it is going up because it is becoming lighter weighted that time over the water bodies the cold air blowing towards land that is called sea bridge due to that the coastal areas basically temperature always get influenced and it become moderate at the night time what's happening at the night the, the land area when reflects the heat and that time it become cold and on the other hand over the water but is gradually it is releasing the heat that's why over this water body is the hot air whenever it is going up and then over the land areas the cold air moving or blowing towards the water bodies this is called actually land bridge okay so here by this land and sea bridge near to the coastal area near to that water, uh, water bodies the areas will have moderate climate now that winds we all know that uh, in this world uh, some places are having some local winds we know the name of the local winds like fawn Sirocco, Lu, Kalbaishaki, and uh, some other also this um, kind of also mistral we can say this cold winds and the 
warm winds local winds which influence that area's temperature over area if the cold wind blowing so area's temperature will also decrease over area if the warm water also warm wind blowing so area's temperature will rise up okay next is ocean currents this point you already have read in chapter that basically hydrosphere chapter when we have discussed that tides and ocean currents in this point you have seen students that um, the warm ocean currents also can be two types warm ocean currents cold ocean currents and you also have read the one of the atlantic oceans ocean currents that warm ocean currents it was gulf stream whenever it is coming over that gulf of mexico of north america and blowing uh, sorry flowing over um, towards that northern side it is increasing the temperature of that eastern part of america and then it is helping to um, it or preventing to freeze that area in this winter season because it is raising the temperature of that areas then another also current cold current that another atlantic ocean cold current we can say labrador current or uh, i can take the example of that kuroshio current uh, which is the warm current and warm current at the part of pacific ocean we can see same it is um, uh, it means that increasing the temperature of japan as are uh, as in winter season due to this warm current the um, uh, it's having a moderate climate and preventing freezing but whenever we are talking about cold current from uh, from over that or the side of which uh, continents or countries the cold currents are blowing that are flowing that area's temperature it will little decrease so the air uh, the areas temperature when it will decreasing so area climate will be moderate and suitable then clouds and rainfall here you just see this diagram you can see the solar radiation when whenever it is coming towards the earth this is the long length wave uh, sorry short length wave and short length wave easily can enter any of the objects but when after uh, so receiving by the earth surface the terrestrial radiation when it is reflecting the or the earth surface when the radiates the heat in that case it become long length wave long length wave can't also move or go above this cloud so in the cloudy day the temperature of that day it can increase due to the presence of the cloud which also prevents to um, uh, to move the terrestrial radiation in the space then slope of the land this is very important point student see here the slope of the land always the steep slope or the southern part of this uh, basically any of the land form will get first the light or the heat you are getting to see the southern side or the steep slope will get first the light then the northern slope and same way that uh, we can uh, sometime in the exam it can ask uh, though nepal nepal himalaya and tibet himalaya both uh, both are having uh, ice or the snow but which uh, part the um, snow will melt faster so here always you have to remember that southern part getting light faster so here nepal himalaya the southern side and tibet himalaya at the northern part so nepal himalaya snow will melt uh, faster or uh, fast than that uh, tibet himalaya clear next one more point here in this slope that here you can see that in the maximum in the hilly uh, that valley areas and in the hollows we can see inversion of temperature this is very important we have read in this case that where temperature with the height it decrease that is called lapse rate that is called lapse rate but here it is happening totally opposite means with the high temperature it's increasing with the height this is called inversion of temperature in that valley areas at the night time when that over that hills or highland area when it radiates the heat fast that time that it become cool it become cool that over the highland area and cold air you know that it is heavy that's why it sinks down it sinks down okay and 
that time valley areas uh, it uh, it also uh, radiates the heat it radiates the heat and the hot air it moves up so whenever it going up we are getting to see the hot air at the upper also altitude and the cold air at the lower altitude it is just an uh, exceptional case this is the normal lapse rate but it is exceptional it is where we can see there that is the valleys area and the hollows area this is called inversion of temperature how it is happening and in the exam it can ask that when the over the land area you know with the height temperature decrease because the density of the air is less so when it is radiating the heat after that the it becoming cold and the cold air is coming down sinks down and then the also that time the valleys also uh, it also radiates the heat so this warm air it moves up it moves up so at the upper area we can say warm air but at the lower part we can see that cold air so in that upper temperature sometimes some uh, kind of fruits and vegetables also can grow okay in that hilly areas and the valley areas so here students we have covered till 7.0 now vegetation cover vegetation how it influence any of the areas that temperature we all know when a area is uh, vegetation less that is directly exposed to the sun directly and it is it is having more capacity to absorb the heat so when it is absorbing the heat that area also radi will radiate the uh, terrestrial radiations and then the areas uh, area will be more hotter than other area where there is vegetation covered so vegetation covered area will not receive that much heat in that case even through that evapotranspiration process that area will have more rain so the temperature will moderate but which area is vegetation less will be exposed to the sun and it will absorb more sun uh, most uh, absorb more sun radiation and due to that it will have more terrestrial radiation next is the air nature of the soil this is the last point of today's discussion student nature of the soil nature of the soil soil can be different type it can be clay soil it can be sandy sandy soil loamy soil so when a soil is clay loamy it will have more capacity to absorb up to hold the water or moisture and when it is having more a capacity to hold the water or moisture means that area can resist the heat and which soil is sandy it can absorb and reflect the heat very fast like you can see in rajasthan desert where sand is there at the day time the temperature reaching the 55 degrees centigrade but the night time it is losing the temperature because reflecting are reaching to 10 degrees centigrade the variation diurnal range is very high there on the other hand where the loamy soil is there the temperature variation not that much clear now on and another also uh, part we can also another uh, example we can give like which soil is dark in color that soil having more capacity to absorb heat which soil is light in color having less capacity to absorb the heat like you know that uh, dark color having more capacity to absorb the heat that's why uh, you know in the saudi arabian countries people used to uh, use that of uh, white clothes why because that is having more temperature so white clothes mean white color it will reflect it will not absorb even at the summer time we, uh, people also prefer to wear light color clothes instead of dark color dark color always absorb the heat okay so here students i think these points you have understood how these four factors affect the any of the distribution of temperature any of the area here students this is the last word here i am completing this insulation chapter so we will meet in the next uh, video with some more information or with some more chapter so thank you so much